Welcome back everyone. Today's video I want to talk you through my process of how I get a fire started when I'm out wild camping or bushcrafting. There's many different variations and techniques out there but this is the one that I feel most comfortable with, the one that I've tried and tested and I know that works. So whatever tool you're using, whether it's matches, a lighter, ferro rod or flint and steel, this is a great method for you to use and I'm confident if you follow each step in this process you'll be able to get a fire going every single time. Right. Let's get into it. So the first step is fire preparation. I can confidently say this is the most important part of the whole process. If you've got a strong fire preparation game, then it's easy work after that. Before we get our fire kits out, we want to go around and collect all the natural material we're going to need. I like to have four piles set out ready to use. So our first pile is tinder, something that'll ignite from a spark or an ember. I'm focusing more on ferro rods and flint and steel here, but it'll also help you out so much if you're using matches and lighters. Some natural tinder that I like to use is dried grass or some dried out leaves or dried out pine needles. Anything really that looks crispy and dead and you know you'll be able to rough it up exposing all the fibres within the material. There is also other woodland resources we can use like scrapings from birch bark or fat wood but right now for this method I just want to focus on that dried out stuff like the dead grass. So as soon as I get into the woodland before I even find my camp spot this is what I'm on the lookout for. Now a mistake to be cautious of is when you do come across your tinder don't start in a dry bag or a sealed off bag. You want to either put it in your pocket or a nice breathable cotton bag where that air is going to get to it and help dry it out even further. The chances are as soon as you pick that tinder, it's not going to be 100% dry straight away. You should also carry something as backup as well. You might get really unlucky and not come across anything that's usable or it might be soaking wet outside and it just becomes very impractical foraging for wet tinder in that scenario. Me personally, I like to carry a bundle of twine. Now it does take a little bit longer to process this up. You'll need to cut it up into small pieces and pull them fibres apart. And after repeating that process for a little while, you'll have a nice fluffy ball of tinder ready to go. Right, so that's our first pile done. Our second pile, we want extra tinder. Now, trust me on this one. So once we have that initial flame, it's still going to be really delicate. So we want to really establish the flame with some extra tinder before we move on to bigger things. An extra pile of dead grass like we collected earlier is ideal, but there's also some other things we come across in the woodland. I mentioned them earlier, which is perfect for this stage. And that is birch bark. This stuff is amazing. It's really flammable and waterproof. You could even get a fire going with this stuff alone. Also, fat wood is something to look out for. Now you can find this at the base of pine trees where the branches attach to the trunk and again this is really flammable stuff but again it goes without saying at this point if you are struggling to find some due to bad weather conditions you should always have some backup tinder in your bag ready to use. In my case this would be twine but I wouldn't process it up as much as I did at the first stage. I would just chop it up in little sections and that'll do the job nicely. Next, we want to collect some twigs. Now, make sure they are twigs. I would say no bigger than the size of a pencil. If you're in those wet conditions, try collecting these from dead branches or maybe it's at the base of trees where it's more likely to be dry. If you have a no look at all and there's only wet twigs on the ground, then don't worry, we can still use them. Just try and collect the very thin ones so when you're adding them to the fire, the process of drying them out is a lot quicker. Right, and for the last pile, if it's a nice dry day, just gathering up some sticks from the ground will do the job spot on. I would say no bigger than the OK sign is a good rule of thumb to go by. But if it's raining or you're in those wetter conditions you really need to be looking out for dead standing trees or dead branches that are up and away from the ground. You may also need to be looking at processing up some bigger logs at this point getting right into the centre where you know it's going to be nice and dry inside. Batoning is a great technique for this. It's a skill every outdoorsman should have in his toolbox ready to use. Right so that's the four piles we have prepared. So we've got tinder, secondary tinder, twigs and some sticks or processed wood. You could always carry on this method by increasing the piles and increasing the size of the wood but for me personally I'll do this if or when I need to. Next step we want an area that's free from debris where that fire is going to be contained and has zero risk of spreading. Making your fire pit with stones will also help create a safer workplace. It'll benefit you as well. It'll help capture all the heat within the fire. And last of all we want a raised platform. Some of those sticks or the processed wood we collected earlier will do the job nicely. Right we're good to go. Time to get your fire kits out and choose your tool of choice. If you've watched my channel before you know I like to use my flint and steel but I find a ferro rod is the more go-to choice so so that's what we'll use for this demonstration. Right then, let's get amongst the fire pit and put all these words into action. 
just remember to really rough up that initial pile of tinder you want it nice and flaky with all those fibers exposed you'll also notice that a lot falling off onto the ground which is great you can pick that up put it on the top of your pile right at the place where you plan to ignite right guys we're all set up i don't want anyone judging my furrow rod techniques in the chat like i'm a flint and steel guy but let's give it a go as long as you're sticking to this formula even if it takes you a few attempts it will work just keep at it right let's give it a go there we are just want to let the oxygen get to it as well so you don't want to smother it just yet there we go and you'll notice as well once you're at this stage that's all now creating little embers so you've got your pocket bellow or you can just blow on it once you've got that initial flame you are good to go it's just a matter of patience and start adding this get our twigs ready just a few at a time you want to remember as well fire likes chaos so you don't have to have everything nicely regimented on your fire you just chuck it on as long as you're still letting the oxygen get to it it'll be fine you might find that this initial flame dies out but like i said you've got that bed of embers if you keep blowing on that it'll just poof back up into action i think we can start adding our bigger sticks now could go on all day talking about fire making the different techniques out there the different type of tinder and natural resources we can use and um, but i wanted to keep this video simple straight to the point with a formula that i know that works every single time so if you enjoyed this video please give it a like and a comment let me know if you'd like a more broader style video on fire making like a tips and tricks type one and yeah thank you for watching i'll see you on the next one peace